I've frequently heard that there's a lot of gray in the world. And the idea when someone says this is that, you know, you can't just say something's right or wrong. There's a lot of gray area. And I would like to spend a few minutes discussing that, calling that to your attention and seeing if you agree. And so we're going to look at a few examples here as we go along. And I would encourage us to think about the difference between some words that can have many degrees and words that do not have degrees. What I mean by this is let's look at the let's look at the light switch. A, a light switch, and let's actually take one of those cool ones that has a dimmer on it. <clears throat> one position is off. And when we're talking about this light switch with a dimmer that's in my dining room, that light switch either is off or it is on. There are no degrees of off. If it is off, it is off. No electricity is flowing. No light is being emitted when it is off. That is an absolute, done deal, strict definition. That is off. Now, when I turn it on, there can be many different degrees. There can be just slightly on, I don't know, 5%, 10%, all the way up to 100%. And there can be 73.614432614898776621 percent. Like we can get really, we can break it down into a lot of different degrees of being on, but it is on. It is either on or it is off. Now, gray is perhaps a bit different. We have black and we have white. Now, in those two words, something is either white. Or, or it's black. If it is not one of those two things, if it is white, but it also has a little black in it, it's gray. If it was black, but now it has a little bit of white in it, it is now gray. So gray does have a lot of degrees, a lot of degrees within gray. However, white and black do not have degrees. Those two words stand on their own. It's a, it's a one thing, one thing only white, black, off, as far as my light switch goes. Here's another one. What about the word integrity? Well, something is either true, there's truth, or it is untrue. Now, in the untrue category, or that half, or, the, or that, that side of the equation, well, there can be lots of degrees of untruth. It can be slightly untrue, or it can be very untrue. But if there is even a shred of non-truth in something, eh, it's untrue. Sexual purity. If someone is sexually pure, well, that means that there is no, <laughs> their character has not been sullied. Or I guess it wouldn't be character, but their sexual knowledge has not been sullied. Now, if a person's uh, sexual knowledge, sexual experience, if it has had some exposure to something sexy, then it is no longer pure. And so I get, perhaps it's subjective, perhaps it's objective, but there are a lot of degrees within sexually experienced, within that category. So it can be anywhere from a, a kiss or a slight touch all the way up to like the most crazy, wild, libertine politician's wife. Like, there's a whole lot of space between there. Now, we can give names to certain areas within this huge area. We can say, okay, if a person has done a lot of this, this, and this, but none of this particular thing, then we call them a virgin. And then once they've done that particular thing, now they're no longer a virgin. So we can give names to those certain areas, just like the light dimmer switch. We can have it at 73%. And we can give that a name like, uh, I don't know, Moody. We can call it Moody if it's at 73%. We can give names to varying degrees of a thing. But there's still that difference between being pure or being experienced in terms of sexuality. What about poison? Poison is a great example. Something is either without poison or with poison. And if it has any poison in it at all, it is poisonous. might not be harmfully poisonous, 
But if we took the ocean and the ocean was perfectly free of, I don't know, strychnine, who knows if it is, but let's say it is. If we add a billionth of a drop of strychnine to the ocean, the ocean is now no longer in the same category. The ocean is now poisonous. Not very poisonous, not harmfully poisonous, but it can no longer be said to be pure, clean, non-poisonous water. It has changed its characteristic with that one little drop. Alone is another word. Alone versus group, let's say. If you are alone, then it is only you. Only you. If one or more other people join you, you can't be said to be mostly alone. I guess you could say mostly, because that's kind of agreeing that you're you're there's a degree there. But there there are a lot of degrees of being in a group, from two people up to infinity. That's how big a group can be. But if you're down to one, you're no longer a group. You are now alone. That word has a very specific meaning. Individual kind of ties into that. Individual versus collective. If it's just one, it's individual. So if we talk about individual rights or collective rights, if such a thing exists, then we need to look at those words. Now, let's return to the everything is, uh, you know, gray. Nothing's black or white. That's untrue. There are things that are white, there are things that are black, and there are things that are gray. Be careful as you're listening to people talk and make sure that you make, make the distinction. Now, here's some, a way that I like to look at it. There are certain things that are subjective. There are certain things that are principles, and maybe even a principle is subjective. But if I look at the idea of a, a principle in my life, is that, uh, let's say, I, I say truth is good, and I will only speak truth. Let's say that I've set that as my my principle, my life rule. Then I have to hold to that very closely. If I ever decide that I want to include some untruths in what I say, then perhaps that's okay morally. Perhaps my value of truth is not a good one. Perhaps it's it's something that in time I'll realize, oh, that was silly. I used to think truth was good. But I need to recognize that if I change to adding any degree of untruth to what I say, that it is no longer truth. I am can no longer say that I am an honest person. If there is even a smidgen of dishonesty, no longer in that category. So what do we do in the practical real world away from uh, philosophy specifics exactness? What do we do if we kind of throughout our life we've we've said we're honest but we're also kind of dishonest at times and and then we realize that you know that's probably not the best way. We're going to get really strict with ourselves and be be self-disciplined and be completely honest. What can we then do to say to people, honestly, that we are a truthful person, that we're an honest person. Well, I would say that you could, it would be completely fair to say, hey, I've messed up a lot in my life. I've, I've told lies I've, I've to varying degrees, but now I've decided to move forward and be truthful in everything I do. And therefore, I'm a truthful person. Yeah, I'm good with somebody saying that. Yeah, we could nitpick and say, no, at one point in history, you said something that wasn't true, but now yeah, I'm good with somebody apologizing and just kind of moving forward. And again, that's a little bit more casual, you know, country philosophy kind of thing that we're not sticking exactly to it. But I, I'm okay with that. If a neighbor makes that decision to to clean up their act and be be truthful, uh, then I'm I'm really good with that. So please do look at the difference between principles and preferences, and that's a whole other topic that we can get into. But I would say in matters of principle. There are, is frequently an onside and an offside, and uh, I guess we could call that a a yes. There's some side, and no, there ain't none side. And so, if we're talking about poison, no, there ain't none in that glass of water. And then in the next glass of water, yep, there's some, but it's not harmful. And then in the third glass, yep, there's a bunch in there, and it's really harmful. But if there's any in it, then there's some. 
So be thinking as people speak, be thinking as you speak, and as you pick words, and as you talk about ideas, uh, there's some that who cares? Yeah, we had a good time today. Good time, that is subjective. There's lots of gray area in had a good time. There can be lots of uh, great times and some mediocre times and a couple bad times, but overall you can still say, yeah, it was a good day. That's fine with me in language. Let's take that liberty. Let's. I think we can remain intellectually honest and do that. But when we're talking about serious ideas, eh, maybe we should really think about this on and off switch concept. I hope this has helped your ideas. Please think of other words or topics beyond what I've uh, mentioned and uh, write them write them somewhere here in the description. Email them to me. Send them to me somehow. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be neat to see what other words you think are uh, frequently misused that do definitely have a uh, an on or off switch to them.